Today for Mousetrap Monday, I'm going to do another Mousetrap history video and show you what mousetraps look like that were used in the 1800s. This comes at the request of quite a few YouTube viewers who want to see my mousetrap collection. In videos, I've mentioned I have a very large mousetrap collection with over 2,000 different items. I can't show that whole collection in one video. That would take way too long. So I thought I'd break it up by different time periods and show you the different mousetraps that were used in those decades. And to guide me through this video, I'm going to follow this book. It's called 19th Century Mousetraps Patented in the U.S. An Illustrated Guide. There's several different editions for different time periods all the way up to modern mousetraps. Also, there's a guide for French, English, and German mousetraps. It's fascinating. When I first read this book, I didn't realize how much money it was going to cost me. I want to get as many different mousetraps in this book as possible. I have a good start, and this has cost me well over $15,000 to get these mousetraps. And the ones that remain are very rare and expensive. So the first mousetrap listed in the book is not a specific brand, but a style of mousetrap known as a toy wheel. I have one right here. The first patent for this style was in 1868. It's basically a wire cage mousetrap with a spring-loaded door. It's held open with a bait hook when the mouse pulls on it. It closes. Then the mouse goes into this running wheel. It can exercise. Plus, this will squeak when it's running, and that way you know you caught a mouse. So it's pretty humane, something for the mouse to do. Plus, you can check it right away and let the mouse go. Now, the next mouse trap listed is called the Everett Self Setting. It came in a single, triple, or five traps. Basically, it's a snap style trap. It was patented in 1870. Now, I've never even seen these before. I only know of one example with pictures. So basically, it's so rare. If it ever comes up for sale, it's going to cost a lot of money. I'll keep watching, but it's basically one that's so rare, I don't plan on ever adding it to my collection. If I do, I'll be really excited. We'll turn to the next page, the Baker Perpetual. This trap was patented by Loring Baker in 1865. It's basically a teeter-totter live catch mouse trap. Now I do have one of these, but it's missing the top lid. It's pretty hard to find these complete. There's two holes on either side and a teeter-totter with a divider. When the mouse enters, it will step on it and will keep them from going back out through the holes. That way it has to enter through this back chamber. There's a one-way door. The next mouse will come, enter, this will drop down, and all night long, back and forth, the mice will enter, get caught, and go to the side chambers. A pretty cool trap, and a very old trap. The next traps in the book are called Catch Em Alive. It came out in two different versions. The first one was oblong or rectangle shape, and it was patented in 1871. Next, in 1873, a version came out that was oval, the Catch Em Alive. I do have one of these, they're more common. These are pretty special traps and they sell for well over $1,000. This is a later version that has the patent numbers right there, October 17th, 1871 and March 4th, 1873. If we lift up the lid right here, it folds open. That's the holding chamber. And over here, this is where the mouse enters from either side. It tries to get the bait, the doors close, and it goes to this back chamber. And when it does, it lifts up the door and you can catch them. So basically, once a mouse is caught and goes into the back chamber, it resets. So you can catch quite a few mice in one night. A very cool trap and it works well. My book is falling apart. The pages are loose, so I have to be careful. But the next trap in the book is called the Delusion. This style was one of the most popular mouse traps in the 1800s and used up through the 1920s. Many different companies made it. It was first patented by John Morris in 1876. Later, it was made by Claudius and Jones. Right here, I have a label right here that says Claudius and Jones. These are very rare. There's only a few examples known with the paper label and made by Claudius and Jones. The reason they're so rare and valuable with paper labels is once you catch the mice, they enter, step on a teeter-totter, it closes. They go to the back chamber and it resets. The instructions say to drown them in water so the paper labels didn't survive if people followed the instructions. Plus, they're very old and paper deteriorates. So you might see many versions of this trap on eBay. Usually without the label, they sell for around $20 maybe more, but if they have a label that's rare, they can go for hundreds of dollars. I have 10 different versions made by different companies. Some are more modern, like the 1920s, and some are very old, like this one. The book also says they made a variation called the Bonanza. This still has part of the label is made by the Lovell Manufacturing Company. It's basically a very similar design. The door closes, but it's much smaller. It doesn't have that front piece. Next, we have the Novelty, patented by Chancey Orton, of Glen Falls, New York in 1877. The novelty is very rare also, but of course I have one. Here it's a metal box. There's a door that's closed. 
and a glass window. The mouse will want to enter. It can see a way out, so it enters right here. Lift this up. There's a mechanism for opening and closing the door. Okay, my pages are a disaster. We'll turn. Ah, oh, the clown face. This is a very well-known trap and rare. Modern collectors call this trap the clown face, but in 1878 when it was made, it was actually more a political statement that was racist in nature. Now the next trap in the book is called the Rapid Transit. It was first patented in 1878, and it was only made for one, maybe two years. Now there's only four, maybe five known examples. I talked to other collectors, and I have one of them. Here it is, it has a rusty lid. The hinge is kind of broken, but it works well. In a recent video, we caught two mice with it. They went inside, stepped on the teeter-totter, it closed, they went in the back chamber. Now this trap is one of my favorite mouse traps. Even though it's in pretty poor condition, it's so rare, I'm glad to have it in my collection. We'll turn the page. The next trap is called the Anti-Cat. Now I don't have one of these, I've never had a chance to buy one. I've seen them around, other collectors have them, so hopefully one day I can get an Anti-Cat but I know it's gonna cost well over a thousand dollars, maybe several thousand. The next trap in the book is called the Ideal. This trap was first patented in 1873. Now I actually have one of these. Here it is, it has cute little windows, a wooden top, and here's where the mouse enters. Almost every one of the known examples, the mice went inside and then chewed their way out. It was a design flaw. There's a few in better condition, but most of them are gonna have the chew marks right here. This folds out, the mouse steps on it, closes the door, and comes through this trap door right here. The next trap is called the Marty. It's a wire cage trap. These were very popular in France. It was first patented in 1883. Here's a Marty right here. There's a wire funnel that's pointing down. The mouse enters, then they can't find the way out. So they go to this back chamber, and there's a counterweight door. They end up in the back chamber. One after another, they'll go inside and get caught. Then at the end of the day, when you want to let them go, you open up this back hatch. A very cool trap made of all wire. The next trap is called the Peerless. Here, this is a very complicated trap based off a German inventor named Carl Bender. The Peerless was made by the Automatic Trap Company and patented here in the US in 1895. I do have a very early style. This one even has the paper label, the Peerless Automatic Mousetrap. The mouse enters, steps on a teeter-totter. When they do, the door closes. They climb up a tunnel with a one-way door, then go off a diving board into a tank of water. When they drop down, the body weight lifts up the door for the next victim. So at the end of the night, this back can here is completely full of mice. Now, actually, I have this sitting on the counter, and I smelled something. It smelled pretty bad. A mouse had climbed in this trap, climbed up there, and got caught. I have to wash it out. It reeks. You have to be careful with old mouse traps. They're designed to catch mice, and if you set them on the shelf, Sometimes you'll still get them when you don't intend to. Our next trap is called the Royal Number no. 1. It was patented in 1879. It's a cast iron snap trap with big teeth and hearts in the lattice. I actually have one of these. This is one of my prizes of my collection. These sell for between three dollars and $5,000 in working condition. They're very, very rare and one of the first snap style traps. The mouse will pull the bait and it will chomp down on them. I really like that heart too. A very cool trap. Now over here, we have a trap called the Cyclone, also made by the Morris Brothers. It was patented in 1883. Here's a Cyclone right here. It's a wire snap trap with a trigger and a wire spring on the pan. Next, if we turn the page, the Little Wonder. It's an L-shaped snap style trap and it was patented in 1886. I never had a chance to get one of these. There's quite a few L-shaped traps for catching rats, but I've never seen a Little Wonder. I'll keep my eye out for it. Here's the next one. It was patented in 1886. I have one of these. It's also an L-shaped snap trap. It's pretty small and very effective. The mice pull the bait and it will slam down on them. Ah, next we have the Out of Sight. This is one of the very first snap style mouse traps made by William Hooker in 1894. It's basically the grandfather of all snap traps and some of the first had paper labels. This is such a rare mouse trap. I was really glad to add it to my collection. The Out of Sight made by William Hooker. I'm always nervous to set it, but it still works. Now Hooker also made another snap style mouse trap in 1897 called the Eclipse. I only know of one example. It's in the museum owned by the Woodstream Corporation. I had the privilege of going and seeing their collection and photographing the original. It's such a beautiful trap, but I don't think there'll ever be one for sale. We'll turn the page. Halls up to date. 
They made these in mouse and rat versions. It was patented in 1897. I once owned a rat version of this. I've never had a chance to get a mouse version. The rat version I had was part of a trade to get the royal number one. If I ever find a mouse version, I'll make sure to try to get it for my collection. The self-setting. This was patented in 1897. It's a very cool trap made by James West. I've never had a chance to get one of these either, but hopefully one day. Here we go, the Streeters. This is a snap style metal mouse trap. It was patented in 1896. I have one right here. A very effective mouse trap. These were built to last. This one will still catch mice. The winner, the next page. I've never seen this trap. I've never even seen a picture of it. It's made by John Davis and patented in 1898. So I'm still looking for a winner. Okay, the next one's called the mirror. There's quite a few different variations. It was first patented in 1897. Basically, there's a hook right here with bait and behind it is a mirror. When the mouse comes, it will see a competitor and try to steal the bait before the other mouse, which is actually its reflection, takes it. Then it sets off the trap and gets caught. I have two mirrors. The earlier versions didn't have a top piece, but the later ones did. Basically, you pull this up, mouse will grab it, snap down, and you got them. This one even has part of the paper label on top. Originally, the price was 10 cents. And this one has the paper label on back. The Piggott Manufacturing Company. A very cool mouse trap from the 1800s. The next one is the Strengthened Rimmed. It was first patented in 1869. There's quite a few different variations on these choker style traps. The next mouse trap is the Buckman One Hole Self Setting. I've never seen this trap before. I have seen a picture. It was patented in 1870. Here's another one, the Bunnell Easy Set. Now basically this style was made for many, many different years by Lovell Manufacturing Company, but was first patented in 1870. This one can catch five different mice. There's holes for the mouse to stick his head in. There's a wire noose. Basically it's held open, spring-loaded. When the mouse pulls the trigger, it will go up and you got a mouse right there in the noose. You can even get five in one night. In the past, a mouse chewed on this, it broke. This style was very common and mass produced. And that's because they were very effective. The next trap is the sunk spring. This was patented in 1870. It's another choker style mouse trap. I have an example with that sunken spring right there. The wire nooses, this one can catch five. They stick their head in there and get caught. It's basically the same design, except the springs are recessed down inside the wood. There's also the Hotchkiss self setting. I don't have this one. I'm on the lookout for it. And here's a later version called the Hotchkiss 10. Instead of being made out of wood, it's made out of metal and it was patented in 1888. I even have one right here. This will catch five mice. Here's the metal tin. The next trap is called the Snapshot, made by John Mast in 1897. These came in a two and four trap. It's basically a spring-loaded choker and I have both of those. Here's my smaller Snapshot. It even has part of the label still on it. It's a two mouse version. You can catch one on either side with those springs. And here's the four mouse version. The next mouse trap is called the Eagle Claw. This is basically a spring-loaded fish trap, also used as a mouse trap. You place it in the water with a worm on the bait or in the barn hanging from a string, and the animal will reach up, try to grab the bait, and then be pronged with all these spikes. These are pretty valuable. They came in a smaller version and a larger version, and I have one right here. As you pull it, you see those spikes open, and then it'll close and grab the mouse. The next trap is called the Jilson Spear. It's a tunnel right here with spikes that are spring-loaded. When the mouse or rat goes through there, it will release the trigger and get pronged. They came in different sizes. It was first patented in 1857. The smallest version has a width of one and a half inches. I haven't seen a one and a half inch. Most of them are two inches and above. The two inch version was for catching rats. It's too big for catching mice. Well, I hope you like seeing some of the mouse traps that were used in the 1800s. These are very rare and valuable, but I enjoy sharing with you mouse trap history. If you want more history videos, leave a comment down below. I've posted over 700 videos on YouTube and currently I'm posting new videos every Monday and Friday. So if you want to see the best videos on how to catch mice, rats, squirrels, chipmunks, moles, voles, and gophers, and occasionally mousetrap history videos, stay tuned.